Is that bacon on your chest? <laughs> what is it? They're flower petals. I'm still getting bacon. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst runway looks on RuPaul's Drag Race. You know what I say, never work with animals, children, or snowmen. And I'm finishing that up with some more garbage. Everywhere you look, there's a hem. First of all, your hems are bad. And you're wearing a piece of fabric around your waist. And you're calling it a skirt. For this list, we'll be looking at runways from RuPaul's Drag Race that didn't quite live up to this legendary stage. What looks do you think deserve to be here? Which didn't? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Laganja Estranja's Black and White. Laganja Estranja was one of season six's biggest and boldest personalities. Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? Come on, season six, let's get sick me! And she reflected this in her weird and wild wardrobe choices. For episode seven, the runway theme was pretty simple, black and white. You can't go wrong with that, right? Well, take a look at what Laganja chose to wear. I am serving a lizard called Laganja. Mama, y'all can't take it. There were a lot of ideas here, none of which looked like they should go together. From the weird black mohawk, to the spotted silver lips, to the see-through pants with black underwear. Also, pants and a train? It looked like the world's strangest Elvis impersonator was getting married. Luckily, her and Adore Delano's winning pairing in the main challenge saved her from the bottom two. Because whoever said beauty was on the inside is ugly. Number 19, Candy Muse's pocket dress. I have my little 40 pockets dangling from my body, but if you look real close, you can see my ass. Candy Muse may have been one of the most magnetic queens of season 13. However, her fashion sense didn't always match her star quality. While her Mike Wazowski-esque look for Beast Couture was memorable for not so great reasons. Baby, I am an alien that just fell down from space because my alien Judy got hurt. So we're looking for some help. It was her oat pockets runway that had us feeling empty. The unclear concept and messy execution just didn't read pockets making it a painful standout amongst the final five and landing her in the bottom two. I'm sorry, my dears, but you are both up for elimination. In true candy fashion, though, the judges' critiques only motivated her to fight harder, and she slayed the ensuing lip sync to solidify her spot in the top four. Candy Muse, Shantae, you stay. <gasps> Number 18, Soju's Kimchi. Soju. It's Little Pancake's play friend. <laughs> Season 11 began with each queen replicating the look of a past contestant on the show. Soju was assigned Kim Chi's box and quickly got to work on an outfit inspired by their shared Korean heritage. I immediately think hanbok is a Korean dress that all the women in Korea wear for special occasions. It doesn't really show your waist, which means that I don't have to cinch. The fact that Soju essentially used the dress as an excuse not to cinch her waist was the first red flag, clocked by Vanji, who had been eliminated the previous season for an undefined silhouette. I'm not trying to say nothing, but... Vanji, don't do it. Just make sure you have a silhouette, sis. The result was a messily constructed garment that didn't have much shape. And while her makeup was on point, we can't help but see this as a missed opportunity to do more of the exaggerated style that Kim Chi is known for. Number 17, Nina Bonina Brown's Club Kid. Nina Bonina Brown made a splash early on in the competition with her high concept looks and brilliant makeup artistry. Take a bite of this peach. This made her a perfect fit for the Club Kid runway, inspired by the New York avant-garde drag scene of the late 80s and early 90s. Unfortunately, while we could see what she was going for, the execution left something to be desired. Nina Bonina Brown, Anderson Lee. <laughs> Your aorta is showing. <laughs> Nina served fierce face, but the unfinished makeup on her chest really broke the illusion, especially when compared to a few more of the fully formed ideas on the runway. Nina Bonina Brown is the first to walk backwards on the runway. Number 16, Aja's Princess Disaster. Someday she'll be the most ashy princess and she'll live flamingly ever after. While Kimora Black's draggily ever after runway was certainly a candidate for this list, it's Aja's look from that challenge that takes the crown here. Going into season nine, Aja was hyped up as Brooklyn's hottest new queen, and they seemed to buy into their own hype a little too much. Now, how are you gonna shine? I 
just feel so confident about it. I'm just like, I'm gonna do this and it's gonna be cute. You know, I've heard that before. Confident that they'd slay the challenge, Aja's princess disaster character name ended up ironically predicting what their performance would end up being. I literally had no clue at all what was going on tonight. Drawing inspiration from fiery natural disasters, Aja strutted down the runway in a strangely shaped wig, badly blended makeup, and pants that didn't fit them properly. They went on to redo the outfit in All Stars 3 for their redemption runway, proving just how much they'd improved over a short space of time. This look is probably where I felt the ugliest and the lowest on season nine, and that's when the Aja transformation truly began. Number 15, Magnolia Crawford's Party Box. Before Monique Hart's iconic brown cow stunning look, I saw it and I was like, oh, brown cow, stunning. Magnolia Crawford walked the season six runway in a less than stunning bovine print dress. It was created from party supplies given to her as part of the two-part season premiere sewing theme. Magnolia's party box was themed around a hoedown, hence all the cow print. She felt defeated from the start at how hideous her materials were. And we too were woefully let down by how basic the outfit ended up being. It has nothing to do with my style. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's the first challenge. Good God, girl, get a grip. Sure, cow print is a bold look, but to quote Michelle, it's a piece of fabric. I didn't like my box. There's only so much you can do with red and white check. The thing is, you could have done more. I've got a goddamn bow on my ass. Magnolia didn't help her case either by being very short with the judges when they critiqued her lack of effort. I get this angry vibe from you. I, okay. Number 14, Alexis Michelle's roast of Michelle Visage. We normally save the best for last, but in this case, we had to settle for Alexis Michelle. We wish that we could say Alexis Michelle's outfit made up for her terrible jokes during the roast of Michelle Visage, but we can't. We were as confused as the judges as to why she Hulk stepped onto the runway for the season nine comedy challenge. Michelle, Michelle, Michelle. In honor of your big night, I wore your favorite color girl. <laughs> um. Alexis quickly explained that she was wearing Michelle's least favorite color. And you know what they say about jokes you have to explain. My question the whole entire time is why is she green? <laughs> well, Tamar, have you ever watched the show? We've seen body paint on drag race queens before, but when you commit to full body paint, you have to commit to the full body. Otherwise it just looks sloppy. The color also clashed with her dress, which was a completely different shade. It was a long way to go yeah. for a one word joke. Michelle's in like green, so I painted my yeah. body, except for my feet. <laughs> <laughs> it just was misguided, yeah. confused. Number 13, Silky Nutmeg Ganache's face kini. While Silky Nutmeg Ganache was always fairly confident about the strength of her runway outfits, the other queens, especially her bitter rival Evie Oddly, were often quick to point out their flaws. Usually, her impeccable makeup, sharpie eyebrows and all, you need a permanent mark? No, bitch. Is that what you use? That's what I use. were enough to salvage her less polished presentations. But in the case of her face kini look, Silky had nothing to fall back on. Why are you not putting on makeup? I don't need to do nothing but a lip today. Oh, okay. In fact, she didn't even bother to put any makeup on under the mask. While her cockroach, you're a roach, correct? A fly. A fly with no <laughs> wings is a roach. Sorry, fly idea was an interesting take on the theme, the delivery of it was very flimsy, particularly compared to Ben de la Creme's incredible insect realness from season six. I'm just buzzing down the runway, feeling the fantasy. Number 12, Shangela's Christmas Eleganza. Hallelujah! When Shangela returned for season three, she was determined to not let the first episode's traditional sewing challenge defeat her like it did in season two. But once again, it very nearly did. Rather than have their materials for this Christmas-themed runway challenge handed to them, the queens had to source and buy their own from a thrift store. Shangela decided that a round white lampshade could make an interesting snowball-shaped skirt. She wasn't wrong, but her seamstress skills failed her yet again, with the outfit falling apart as she walked the runway, and her wig making it look like she'd been electrocuted while trying to plug in the Christmas tree lights. The execution is poor. The back, it's, it's kind of falling apart, and there just could have been more attention to detail. Not even the addition of an oversized prop could save this one. You know what I say, never work with animals, children, or snowmen. Number 11, Mystique Summer's Madison's Country Realness. 
Mystique is pretty. Everybody loves Mystique. While everybody does love Mystique, her outfit for the country realness runway missed the mark on the theme of the challenge. She looks like she's a big girl going out to a club. Serving more business casual than country girl, her over-the-top eye makeup also did no favors to the underwhelming shirt-pants combo. Not to mention, Mystique made the fatal error of wearing the same top on the runway and in the challenge. The look landed her in the bottom, where she proved no match for the now legendary second season runner-up Raven, who sent her sashaying away. No sashay away. Number 10, Cynthia Lee Fontaine's Roller Girl. Cynthia Lee Fontaine. She's a little bit country. This Barbara Mandrell on wheels. Cynthia Lee Fontaine may have the shortest run of any Miss Congeniality winner, but sadly, this outfit simply did not match the fierceness of her charming personality. A confusing mashup of an elegant top with a country-inspired bottom half and hat resulted in an ill-fitting mess. An admirable but ultimately unsuccessful attempt to try something new by the Queen of Cuckoo, in the end, it was a bit of an assault on the eyes. Though Cynthia lip-synced for her life, she was no match for Robbie Turner's rollerblading skills, which ultimately sent her packing. Keep spreading your cuckoo. Now, sachet away. Hopefully she was able to take solace in the golden trophy the fans later awarded her. Number 9. Honey Mahogany's Bedsheet Caftan only two times in the history of the series has a lip sync resulted in a double elimination. I'm sending you both home. And one half of the very first can be attributed to Honey Mahogany's third and final loose fitting caftan to be torn apart by the judges. What is with you and the caftan collection? Why don't we get to see your figure? Though the previous attempts were elegant enough to keep her out of the bottom, the third strike more resembled a sparkly bedsheet tied together with a belt than an actual outfit. Coupled with an equally gaudy wig, there's no one point of focus, so the only option is to take the entire jumble in one unsavory gulp. At least she was able to prove her range come finale time. I have a little something I'd like to show you. Oh, okay, oh, oh. Number 8. Shangela's Gone with the Window Shangela may now be one of the more recognizable names to come out of RuPaul's Drag Race, but that doesn't excuse her earlier outfits from this list. Tasked with creating a runway look out of window curtains, the admittedly burgeoning queen made a dress more reminiscent of corn stalks than couture, and was criticized by the judges for its overabundance of accessories, design, and failure to be form-fitting. Your bus line is non-existent. There's no waist definition there. Luckily for all of us, she was given the chance to showcase her talents in the next season, as well as All Stars, proving that if at first you don't succeed, try, try, and try again. Number 7. Naysha Lopez's Drag on a Dime Face, body, glamour, and I am definitely serving that all right now. To be fair, Naysha was the first to admit that she was an amateur designer, a skill level which wasn't helped by the fact that her task involved making her dress out of pieces of garbage. This is actually the first garment I've ever made. I don't really sew. I felt like it was wearable and, and you know, I got the, the challenge down. With an unflattering shape and a baffling color combination of green and gold, the finished look was less garbage-inspired glamour and more nauseating. The garbage theme was apparent from the end result, as was the lack of design experience. Unsurprisingly, RuPaul decided to give her the boot, though she would later return to the show for a brief stint of two episodes. Now, sachet away. Number 6. Serena Chacha's Garbage Couture I feel avant-garde, couture, editorial, like some sort of surreal painting. I'm giving them something different. Poor Serena Chacha. She was only able to serve up two looks during her brief tenure on Drag Race, and both were seriously considered for this list. The challenge was to turn garbage into couture, but Serena didn't entirely finish the transformation. We're honestly not entirely sure how she was able to escape elimination with this abysmal outfit. From the lack of creativity to the shoddy execution, there's little room to defend this offering. However, we have to cut her some slack for being the season's youngest queen. She clearly learned from her time on the show and has since developed her aesthetic. Number 5. Derek Barry's Tin Man not a girl, not yet a tin woman. Derek Barry came to season 8 of Drag Race as a famous Britney Spears impersonator, hoping to find her own personal style independent of the pop princess through competing on the show. While the effort was definitely there, the know-how certainly wasn't. 
This Wizard of Oz inspired challenge saw each queen creating a look based on a character from the movie. While Robbie Turner's look also landed her in the bottom, Derek's look has become a timeless invocation of the dreaded corset wrapped in fabric. I'm not a seamstress, but I did sew everything on here. It's a piece of fabric. Whatever vision existed was marred by shoddy construction, which Barry infamously defended in Untucked, much to the frustration of everyone else. Everywhere you look, there's a hem. First of all, your hems are bad, and you're wearing a piece of fabric around your waist, and you're calling it a skirt. Number four, Jiggly Caliente's Apocalypse Couture. Apparently, yeah. hoarding is the new black. <laughs> Jiggly Caliente's run certainly got off to an explosive start, though not in a good way. The first challenge was to create an apocalyptic look based on materials gathered from garbage, and for Jiggly, it unfortunately shows. And I'm finishing that up with some more garbage. All right, listen, I'm gonna let you get back to work. Appearing as though she threw everything she could get her hands on into an outfit, the final product was an amalgamation of mismatched colors and material. It seemed she was destined to be the first elimination. However, Jiggly's bubbly personality allowed for her to overcome her initial misstep and find a decent ranking among the queens of season four. Number three, Kelly Mantle's Downton Abbey, also known as the Baconator. For Kelly Mantle, a well-intentioned use of flower fabric went terribly wrong in the sixth season premiere. In an attempt to make a look inspired by Downton Abbey, she presented an outfit that, while unremarkable at first glance, was critiqued for having a top piece looking more like bacon than flower petals. Is that bacon on your chest? <laughs> what is it? They're flower petals. I'm still getting bacon. Once that was pointed out, there was no way not to see uncooked breakfast meat across her chest. Ordinarily, everything is better wrapped in bacon, but not Kelly. <laughs> and despite being remembered mostly for the unfortunate looking outfit, Kelly has shown she's able to laugh at her mistakes in hindsight, which makes a winner, at least when it comes to attitude. You know what surprised me the most was that the judges weren't hungry for my bacon. <laughs> I mean, what, is everyone a vegan nowadays in LA? Number two, Kennedy Davenport's death becomes her. LaGuardia, Newark, Kennedy, Davenport. Kennedy fried chicken. Kennedy Davenport was very lucky that her team managed to not be on the bottom the week she chose to wear this number. She took to the runway, the theme of which was Death Becomes Her, in a bizarre orange jumpsuit adorned with feathers and what looks like coagulated blood. After a night of hooking, I got a tape and thrown in the fire and crystallized. In Untucked, she explained that the story behind it is that a pimp gutted a hooker and burned her alive, but instead of dying, she crystallized. They say a joke is no good if it has to be explained. And here, apparently the same could be said for a high concept outfit. After a long night of hooking, <laughs> Trey didn't like the session, so he had good at me. Okay. And set me on fire. Oh, I see. But you know, I didn't die. Okay. I had crystallized. Oh. And now I'm a glamazon bitch ready for the runway. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Lala Ree's bag ball. Lala Ree. She got this at Saks. By the time season 13 rolled around, the queens had no excuse for not knowing how to sew. That didn't stop the charismatic Lala Ree from enlisting the help of hot glue and Jesus for this challenge though, as her lack of familiarity with sewing machines resulted in an instantly iconic look for all the wrong reasons. Lord, girl, can you please help me out? The idea was to attach brightly colored bags onto a corset to create a dress. However, as time ran down and the bags ran out, Lala was forced to walk the runway in this, um, outfit, we guess you could call it. Added the purse on my head because I want them to focus on, like, the head up when they kind of look past the construction of the actual outfit. Credit where it's due, she sold the garment and served the lip sync. But this look will go down as a shining example of what not to do in a design challenge. It's what they call a bag lady. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.